I want to agree outside Weather Network, Matt Noyce. You have found the right place for one of my favorite videos that we do. This is Pattern Predictions, looking out to the next two weeks. Now, I always tell you that if you get our app, you can get the 14-day forecast in the app, right? But look, the other part of this is right now we've got two really awesome partnerships going on, and you'll see them in the app. One is with Zoo Lights at the Stone Zoo in uh, Stoneham, Massachusetts. The other one is with Celebration of Lights, which has four locations around New England. Look, the folks that you see on those, those aren't Google ads that show up on the app, right? Those are our partners, and it's the reason we can do this, and we get to do this, and you're enjoying it right now. So please support the partners if you would, and if you want to take in a Holiday Lights experience, check that out. If you want to take in a little bit more on winter sports, I think you're going to love this. If you're into skiing, if you're into snowmobiling, backcountry hiking in the winter, we've got a ton of stuff that's available. Go to snowsports.1degreeoutside.com. We've got a promo code that's going to run through the end of this month. All right, let's get in to that pattern and see how things are looking for snow sports and everything else, right? A lot of talk about a white Christmas. Can we do it? Won't we do it? Let's set the stage for you here, okay? You've got an active jet stream that continues in the northern stream. A number of disturbances that continue to come across the Pacific, come out of Canada, and drop across the country. Now, it all has to do, and we talked about this over pattern predictions over the last several weeks, that we were going into a pattern where it has everything to do with the track and the timing. Because each of these disturbances has plenty of energy, and sometimes they dig. Notice this one is going to dig as we get to the end of the week. We're on the wrong side, though. What are you doing, jet stream? It's pointing right up at us out of the south. Now, look, in one regard, you say, well, good, we get moisture out of it. Yeah, but you're going to get warmth out of it. So if you love snow, that's not what you want to see. There'll be a snap of cold that comes behind it. What's interesting, though, when you start going farther out in time, is as we get to, let's say, the end of the upcoming weekend, so getting in toward the 21st, We've got a jet stream disturbance that came in out of the Pacific, races across the country, and you always want to watch when you're right at the nose of these disturbances. The wind starts to go apart in upper levels of the atmosphere, and it favors the potential of storm development. Again, with this, like with all the others, you've got to watch and see exactly how far it's going to dig down and exactly what that timing is going to be on it. But you got one shot there. Interestingly, you may have another shot as you get in toward Christmas itself. You see, as we get to Christmas Eve, you've got a pretty nice oriented jet where you're bringing in Pacific moisture and you've got disturbances traveling in the flow, right? So the issue on this, once again, becomes do you get a ripple big enough to make precipitation? And at this point, hard to say, but I can show you that as you get to the 25th into the 26th, there are definitely signs you'll have a little bit of a jet lit in here, a little bit of a stronger kind of flow of wind that may promote storm development very close to or over parts of southern New England. So that would be another period we watch on the 25th and 26th. I'll show you a little bit more about why I'm really watching that period coming up in just a moment. And then you get perhaps another trough that digs in because remember, we keep getting these shots of cold that come in and it's about trying to make the most of them on the backside. Notice, by the way, toward the end of the period going out to the new year uh, you still have that same jet stream configuration multiple disturbances zipping along quickly some of them coming with pacific moisture all of this means you're still very much in the game it's just a matter of which ones are going to strengthen and where they're going to do it on a bigger picture, if you watch the podcast with Danielle, Tim Kelly is our special guest, and I on our Inside Track memberships and above, right? You may have seen us talking about the dancing of the polar vortex and the cold pools across the Northern Hemisphere. Basically, what we're referring to there is that you've got a lot of cold that's built up in Siberia. You've got the big cold pools in the polar vortex that's across our side of the globe as well. All of this represents plenty of cold air. You're also sending big shots of energy out into northern Europe and Scandinavia as well. So when you put all this together, these colors represent average height in the atmosphere, average, average temperature, you could think of it, in the atmosphere. So you've got a big pool of cold average air. We're into that, right, as we get into when? Well, just behind what's going to be the shot of warmth that comes in at the end of this week. The thing of it is, and the moral of the story, I'm not even going to stop it anymore. The moral of the story is, for all the swirls that you see, what you do see is the continuing existence of cold and significant cold. It's not going anywhere. This is not a pattern where you talk about excessive warming going on near the pole and you worry that you're going to lose the cold. We are not going to lose the cold anytime in the foreseeable future. And that goes beyond this two-week forecast of pattern predictions, right? That doesn't mean you don't get warm spells. So right now, if you look at warmer or colder than normal, certainly we're starting the week out with the cold air. Here comes the warmth that comes in by the end of the week. This is going to be Thursday, Friday, and this is why many folks, anyway, are going to get rain out of it at the end of the week. Well, 
Notice the shot of cold that builds behind it. It comes in in one installment. It comes in in another installment as you get just before Christmas. And this brings us to that disturbance for the 25th, 26th, the one I was saying to watch. Here's the other thing I look for. If you can be on the leading edge to returning warmth, but you're coming from colder than normal conditions, you set up what's called overriding. You get the warm air coming into the cold, clashing and creating snow. There is a possibility of that happening in that 25th to 26th window. While most of the country, and you'll see this online, on social media, oh, it's gonna be a warm Christmas. Well, yeah, but notice this once you look across the whole country, there's one spot that's trying to hold on to the cold and gets a clash, and that's us. I think the question then as we get out to that holiday week at the end of the week is, does it warm enough to be rain or do you get that push of snow on the front side? I would not rule that out. I think that's a possibility. So there's something to watch there. Notice also as we get out to the end of the year, December 31st, more of that kind of pool of cold bleeding into New England. Not the rest of the country. The rest of the country will be warmer than normal significantly, but we at least still maintain in the game, so to speak. And we're the only ones really who do it at times. In terms of uh, precipitation chances, you got one shot with that rain that comes in at the end of the week, which still will have some snow in some of the mountains, right? Cold air comes in behind it. That's dry air. And then next week, generally your steady state, although again, as you get toward the end of the week, 25th, 26th, you can already see some of that chance spiking up. So let's watch the timing on that. The same rules apply, right? The track and the timing of the disturbances, see how deep it digs. But that would be an important player for us if it comes together in terms of bumping up some of the precipitation forecasts here. In the next 10 days, you don't see a whole lot to write home about, maybe a half inch to an inch of precipitation when you put all the little disturbances together. And when you look at the snow forecast, again, you're not going to see a lot to write home about in southern New England. You do get back into painting some snow in northern New England in the second half of the next 10 days. But I think really what you're going to be watching here is we get out toward the end of that holiday week and then out into the week leading up into New Year's for the reasons we looked at. This obviously has implications on temperature too, right? You get that shot of warmth that comes in. There's the cold that follows. The next shot of cold that follows after that. Watch for these temperatures to go down. I think we do have to figure out when the cold shots that I showed you come in. They're probably going to be more significant than what's being indicated now. So I always like to give you the uh, heads up on a trend before it happens in our forecast. That's one of them. Same thing with the overnight lows, particularly next week. Some of these may end up running on average in the single digits by the time we're done. Again, the cold isn't going anywhere. It's got a lot of power behind it. So when you get these colder shots, sometimes you're going to verify even colder than they looked from the onset. All right. Let me get out of the way and just remind you, this video and all of our videos. So if you love pattern predictions, but you haven't checked out some of the other stuff, come on over. Check it out on your smart TV online or at the top of our app. You can link right to it. It's New England's only 24-7 Weather Network. That's how things look for now. Appreciate your support always here at One Degree Outside. We'll see you again later on.